Hi again. Let's continue our cell tour. In this presentation, we'll emphasize again the experimental approaches to understanding the function of major cell components. We've looked at nuclei, the endosymbiotically formed mitochondria and chloroplasts, and the protein synthesizing machinery of ribosomes. We saw that ribosomes may be bound or unbound. So in this uh, set of slides, we're going to look at rough endoplasmic reticulum, uh, which are the bound ribosomes, which synthesize proteins that are going to be sequestered from cytoplasm in lysosomes or similar organelles, that are going to be secreted from the cell, or that are actually going to end up as membrane proteins uh, embedded in cellular membranes. In eukaryotic cells, Bound ribosomes are attached to membranes of the rough endoplasmic reticulum, or RER, which is actually continuous with the outer membrane of the nuclear envelope. As you'll see, the RER is typically situated in cells near the nucleus on the one hand and near Golgi vesicles on the other. The RER can assume a variety of shapes, like the whorled form at the upper left in this slide. The TEM at the upper right shows a nucleus surrounded by lots of RER and the lower electron micrograph shows RER in the vicinity of Golgi vesicles. The association of RER with Golgi vesicles is related to the fact that the protein synthesized and packaged in the rough endoplasmic reticulum usually travel to the Golgi vesicles for further processing before they reach their final destination. This slide shows an TEM image of isolated vesicles from a cell fractionation. Because the vesicles are studded with particles that are about the same dimensions as ribosomes, it's reasonable to suspect them of being RER vesicles. If they are, then you should be able to predict some activities of such an isolate. Oops, there we go. Specifically, these uh, structures in the test tube should be able to synthesize radioactive proteins using radioactive amino acids. They should contain proteins found in Golgi vesicles, lysosomes, or perhaps cellular secretions, but not proteins found in the cytoplasm or associated with other organelles, like mitochondria or chloroplasts or nuclei. In fact, isolates like these meet these criteria and are clearly RER. This is a TEM of lysosomes in situ, again, in place. The darker structures uh, pointed to by the white arrows are the lysosomes. They're dark in electron microscopy because they pick up a lot of the electron-dense stain used to prepare the specimen. And they pick up a lot of the stain because the concentration of packaged proteins in lysosomes and similarly derived organelles is quite high. Okay, lysosomes derives from the term, a term meaning lytic bodies. What they do is they store hydrolytic enzymes intended to catalyze the hydrolysis of lipids and macromolecules like carbohydrates, DNA, RNA, and proteins. These enzymes are inactive when stored in lysosomes, and for obvious reasons are kept away from the cytoplasm where they would otherwise become active and autodigest the cell, that is to say, digest the cell from the inside out. Lysosomes play roles in several cellular activities. They play a role in the inflammatory response, for example, when phagocytic blood cells engulf the, uh, 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 and then have to digest, for example, an invading bacterium or dead tissue debris after an injury. They also play a role in the destruction of old, worn-out organelles in cells. Very often one finds electron microscope images of lysosomes containing what is clearly a mitochondrion on the way to being digested, the mitochondrion presumably no longer fully functional. Lysosomes also play a role in the programmed death of cells that are no longer needed, a process called apoptosis, or that, that, stand, that means programmed cell death. This happens, for example, during metamorphosis when a frog becomes, when a tadpole becomes a frog or a caterpillar becomes a butterfly, or in um, differentiation in animals in which old tissues are reabsorbed and remodeled into new ones. 
The other organelles that arise from RER and Golgi vesicles and that contain packaged proteins are collectively called microbodies. These are smaller than lysosomes usually and contain fewer different hydrolytic enzymes. One example is peroxisomes, which are particularly rich in enzymes called peroxidases that destroy highly toxic and destructive peroxides like hydrogen peroxide that are generated as a byproduct of some biochemical reactions. And here we see the chemical reaction in which H2O2, two molecules of H2O2, are broken down into two molecules of water and a molecule of oxygen gas. An isolate of vesicles from cells expected to contain peroxisomes can be identified by showing that they break down added peroxides. Though not shown, uh, don't have a, an image for you, uh, an isolate of putative lysosomes can be characterized by assaying them for any one of a variety of hydrolytic enzymes. As I noted, Golgi vesicles are usually found in the vicinity of rough endoplasmic reticulum, from which they accept and then later process newly made, made packaged proteins. The processing can include adding sugars to make glycoproteins and or hydrolyzing parts of a polypeptide that are not going to be needed in the mature functional protein. Since, uh, since the Golgi vesicles are kind of a way station in making uh, proteins destined for different locations, they're going to have to sort the proteins so that they end up in the correct locations. In fact, Golgi vesicles eventually bud to become vesicles that include lysosomes or microbodies or secretion vesicles. Three techniques have been used to show how proteins made in the rough endoplasmic reticulum make their way through the Golgi to their final destinations. These techniques are cytochemistry, which is staining with chemicals that will specifically recognize packaged or membrane proteins, immunocytochemistry, whoop, here they are, which is staining with tagged antibodies that specifically recognize packaged or membrane proteins, and autoradiography. This is the detection of radioactively labeled packaged proteins so that we can localize them in appropriate organelles. This slide is a demonstration of cytochemistry. In this case, the cells have been stained for a specific secretory protein using a probe covalently linked to an electron-dense chemical tag. In other words, this stuff's going to appear very dark in the electron microscope image. The upper panel is an overview of stained cells. The lower panels are more high magnification views of parts of the cell. You can see the intense stain lying in the space enclosed by the nuclear envelope in the lower left image, in the RER and Golgi vesicles in the lower middle image, and in a very highly magnified Golgi vesicle uh, at the right. When fractionated by differential centrifugation and then viewed by TEM, isolated structures that look remarkably like Golgi vesicles can be seen. That these are Golgi vesicles can be confirmed by, first of all, destroying the membranes and releasing the proteins and then assaying the proteins for specific hydrolytic enzymes, peroxidases, or for that matter, secretory proteins. The nuclear envelope, the RER, Golgi vesicles, lysosomes, microbodies, and secretion vesicles, and even the cell membrane, make up the endomembrane system. The side of a Golgi apparatus closest to the RER in a cell is called its cis face, and the opposite side its trans face. In this cartoon uh, of cell sections uh, that were treated with a stain to detect a specific secretory protein, you get the impression that there's less stain, and therefore less of the protein, in the RER and the cis vesicles of the Golgi body than there is in the trans uh, vesicles or in the secretion vesicles. Think about why that is. Also, why do some of the trans Golgi vesicles and the lysosome shown drawn here appear to be empty in this cartoon? Think about that. We'll have occasion to discuss that in class. Here's 
the, the pathway of movement of proteins through these vesicles, either to the secretion vesicle and out of the, out of the cell, or to a lysosome. Here are some TEMs of smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Like rough endoplasmic reticulum, SER can appear differently in cells. In the TEM on the left, we see a whorl of SER. On the right, the SER is less organized and can be seen to be continuous with rough endoplasmic reticulum. This raises a fascinating question of what defines the border between these two functionally different regions of the same or at least similar membrane. The SER uh, serves diverse and apparently unrelated functions. In the animal liver, one of the functions is to synthesize steroid hormones. Uh, another is to oxidize hydrophobic compounds into hydrophilic ones. This is catalyzed by an enzyme of the SER called cytochrome P450. The SER will also synthesize glucose after the breakdown of glycogen when you haven't had a meal and you are using uh, stored glucose. SER serves to detoxify harmful substances like alcohol and even certain drugs. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is also a storage site for calcium ions in all cells, but especially in skeletal muscle where we will see an elaboration of SER into something called sarcoplasmic reticulum. You should be getting the impression that different parts of a cell perform different tasks. Clearly, eukaryotic cells have more spaces and places to compartmentalize different chemical reactions. Even membranes themselves, like the plasma membrane, can be a separate and distinct compartment performing chemical reactions not found elsewhere in the cell. The plasma membrane can be fractionated as a relatively high-speed supernatant in a cell fractionation. The TEM here shows such an isolate. At high magnification, membranes seem to be composed of three layers. This is called the trilamellar structure, and at the molecular level it is the more familiar uh, phospholipid bilayer. Studies reveal that the plasma membrane, indeed each different type of membrane in cells, contains unique molecules that can perform specific functions. Now, do you remember any of the specific functions performed, for example, by a plasma membrane in a eukaryotic cell? Think about that and maybe we'll address some of these questions in class. We'll conclude our tour of the cell with a look at the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton is a uniquely eukaryotic phenomenon. The three main components of the cytoskeleton provide shape to cells and participate in motility. And here they are. Microtubules are shown at the top. These are made up mostly of polymerized alpha and beta tubulin polypeptides. And they're involved in cell shape as well as in cell motility. Microtubules are thought to be hollow tubes. At 24 nanometers in diameter, they're the largest cytoskeletal element. Microfilaments are made up largely of polymerized actin polypeptides. At 7 nanometers in diameter, these thin filaments are the smallest component of the cytoskeleton. And thirdly, intermediate filaments at about 10 nanometers in diameter are aptly named because they're in the middle in, in their diameter between microtubules and microfilaments. They're formed as dimers of extended polypeptides. That simply means that these polypeptides don't have much three-dimensional or tertiary structure. A common example is keratin, the major protein of hair and fingernails found outside cells. Well, keratin inside cells forms a part of the cytoskeleton. Here are two images that reveal that cells do indeed have a fibrous cytoskeletal matrix. And they're not just a bag of sappy cytoplasm. All the particles and organelles are essentially hung on the scaffolding or framework. The left image is a high voltage EM image. The high voltage aspect of this technique allows viewing of electrons that penetrate a much thicker cross section of cells. So when they come out the other side and create the image, you get a much more three-dimensional view of the cell's ultrastructure. The computer colorized frozen section electron micrograph on the right shows cytoskeletal filaments that lie just under the cell membrane. The region just under a cell membrane is called its cortex. It often contains a high concentration of cytoskeletal filaments, which can explain how a cell maintains its overall shape. 
This slide summarizes the involvement of cytoskeletal components in either shape or motility in cells. You may recall the role of microtubules in mitosis as the main part of centrioles and as key players in ciliary and flagellar motion. They're also found in the microvilli of cells lining our small intestines. Why do you think they're found there? Think about that. Perhaps we'll have a chance to talk about it in class. Microfilaments are involved in muscle contraction as the thin filaments that slide against the thick filaments called myosin filaments. They also account for amoeboid movement and cytokinesis, or the splitting of one cell into two at the end of mitosis. Not shown here is that microfilaments also play a role in cell shape. Intermediate filaments are mainly involved in maintaining cell shape. They have no direct involvement in cell motility, but as we'll see later, they can have an indirect role in cell movement, particularly in uh, muscle contraction. And that brings us to an end of this presentation.